Imagine this, a regular person who is also a fantastic father, a wife who is an overachiever, and a story twist that would make Netflix blush. One woman's patient is another woman's chance to cheat. Wife slept with her patient at workplace, showed her live tape to everyone in the hospital. I am 33, married to my doctor wife Nova, F, 31. My life is very simple, at least it was simple until now. Here's a little context. I met Nova in a co-working space, where I usually sit in the evenings to get isolated for my work. I never really thought about working over a relationship, but meeting her began a series of events that ultimately led to falling in love. Early in my 20s, I had been in a relationship that ended with an ugly breakup. After that, I swore to never get into a serious relationship. However, a few meetings with Nova changed my thoughts and perspectives. I realized that I had healed from my past and was ready to explore new relationships. A few days into each other and I asked her out. One date led to another and I finally proposed to her with a ring after two years of courtship. Things worked well between us. We both worked in the days and would spend our evenings and nights together until she had to attend her night calls. Our bond blossomed with each day. Even after our marriage, we would go out for the official dates and dinners. Now and then we would surprise each other with little cute gestures. This beautiful bond strengthened even more a year ago when we were blessed with a cute baby boy. It was the happiest moment and the best gift for us. We had always looked forward to this moment. We were eager to become parents. We had shared our chores. A few months back, Nova's maternity leave ended and she had to rejoin the hospital. The hard time started now. I had to go to my job too. Leaving the baby with a nanny was an option, but I did not want to opt for it. The sole care of the baby by a nanny was the least I would have wanted. After a lot of brainstorming and discussing our options with friends and family, we came to the conclusion that we would cut back on the extra hours we put at work and come back early, Nova would take care of the baby, and I would do the household chores. Things began to get settled. I also fulfilled my part. After coming home from office, I would lend my entire time to Nova and my baby. I wanted to give my love and time to my family as they were my priority. Work was a demand of time, but the family was even more important. Soon after that, I noticed some changes in Nova. No doubt she had changed her routine. She was home by early evening, but whenever I was around her, she would stay silent and serious. She hardly had any good conversations with me. My efforts to keep her happy seemed to be of no use, but still I tried my best. I was sure one day she would understand my point and things would turn out good. Three months back, we got a good news. My parents shifted back to the town. You see, my dad is a serviceman, and for that reason, my parents had to live in different parts of the country wherever he was posted. A few months back, he retired and came back permanently to our ancestral house in the town. Our ancestral house was a couple of blocks away, almost two miles, not that far. This was a big relief. This changed a lot. It gave a chance for Nova to fulfill her work demands properly once again. We would leave our baby and the nanny with my mother daily in the morning and then go to our jobs. In the evening, whoever came first would pick him up from there and return home. This new routine was easy and relieving. My son was growing healthy as his grandparents would take good care of him. We gradually came back to our routine of giving full time to our work commitments. I was hoping that Nova would also get back to her normal self of being a happy and joyous soul. It did get better for a couple of weeks when we went on date and movie nights, enjoyed our me time, and did everything we used to do before the baby. Things were getting fine when one day a strange incident happened. I planned a surprise for Nova. I bought a bouquet of red roses and her favorite cake. I also reserved a table at her favorite restaurant. I'd planned to take her out on a date that night and spend a lovely time together. I asked my parents to take care of our son for an extra few hours while we were away. Nova didn't get the hint of it. In the evening, I left my office and went to the hospital to pick her up. After reaching there, I called her, but there was no response. I waited a few minutes, but she did not call me back. Then I decided to go inside and look for her. At the reception, when I inquired about her, the receptionist told me that for the last two days, Nova left the hospital early as there was some conference she had to attend. This news was a bit shocking for me as never before had Nova gone somewhere without telling me. She always shared all her events and schedules with me. Some thoughts arose in my mind, but I shook them off. I thought maybe the burden of the job, looking after the baby and the household chores, might have got this to be skipped from her mind. In the evening, when she came back, I waited a while to see if she shared something, but no, she did not discuss anything. 
So I started. I told her that I visited her hospital today, and the receptionist told me that she was busy with some conference. Nova was in shock for a moment, but she managed herself quickly and said that she completely forgot to share about the conference with me due to the busy routines. She apologized and the thing sorted out. She also gave me the details of the events that had been happening for the last three days. She explained to me what the conference was about and what role she had in it. Though I'm satisfied with the conversation, deep inside something is hitting me. I have a gut feeling that something going wrong in this aspect. It is difficult to absorb that a person who shared every little detail with me forgot to share an important event of her life. I don't know if I'm overthinking or if my instincts are directing me towards something. Edit to add. As per the initial few comments, I'm doubting my wife for just one instance. I'm not! It is not just about one incident that she forgot to tell me about the conference. It's about the last six months of her coldness and indifference towards me that is forcing me to think otherwise. I still hope that you guys turn out to be right that I'm overthinking unnecessarily and that my wife is up to no evil. Reading out reaction before update. It sounds like you're going through a challenging time, and the shift in your wife's behavior has understandably raised concerns, OP. It's possible that recent changes in your family dynamics have contributed to some shifts in communication, and that might be all it's chalked up to me. Raising a baby sort of changes the trajectory of life for some and it can be a hard path to navigate at first. Update 1. After my last post, I kinda got back to my life with the hope that maybe it was just me who was reading too much between the lines, but I think the flag is getting red day by day and I no longer can ignore it. After that incident, soon there was a shift in Nova's routine. She started coming home late and told me that there was an overload of patients these days and also some upcoming seminars and conferences needed her time there. I tried to compensate for her absence to our son. I would come home early to spend more and more time with him, as now his increasing age demands the time of his parents. I would also cook the dinner so that Nova does not have to work once she comes back tired from the hospital. She would just come, eat dinner, and go to sleep. She hardly gave any time to me or our son. This was a thing upsetting for me. I always wanted to give our son the quality time. I never wanted him to be neglected by any of his parents. I tried to talk about this with Nova, but once again, she just got defensive and did not get my point. Rather, she told me not to bother her ever again with this topic. I was astonished to hear such words from her as these were the least expected. Within the next few days, her aura changed totally. She would hardly be seen at home before night. Almost daily, she had her dinner outside. Our son was completely ignored by her. She never wanted to be near him or give him a good night kiss. With me, she would either not talk at all or just be cold. I was agitated over this behavior. I tried an open discussion, but she was not up for it. She was always like, not today, please, I'm busy. On her off days, she would be like, not today, please, I need to relax. One day, I had a meeting with a foreign group, so I was expected to be late. I dropped our son off at my parents and told them that Nova would pick him up in the evening. I also reminded Nova before leaving for work, and she nodded her head. After the meeting, I called Nova to ask if she was back, but she did not answer my call. Then I called my mother to ask if my son had been picked up from their home. There was no response from there either. I left the office and went home just to find that the door was locked and Nova was not back yet. It was 10 p.m. I thought maybe she was there at my parents' place, so I drove there. To my surprise, there was no sign of Nova. My son was still playing with his grandma. I was worried and curious at the same time. I called her again and again, but now her number was switched off. I called the hospital reception, but no response. I was frustrated and angry. I picked up my son and went home. I did not want to upset my mother about the fact that Nova wouldn't be home till late at night. Back at my place, I gave John his nighttime milk and put him to sleep. Early in the morning when I woke up, I found Nova on the sofa in the lounge. She had been sleeping there without changing her scrub. I stopped myself from waking her up and waited till she got up herself. It was Sunday. After an hour or two, when she woke, I inquired about where she was last night. She did not bother to reply to me, rather got up and went inside the room. Her reaction was totally weird. I also got angry and went behind her to ask again. She yelled at me for being nosy and wanted to be left alone. She said that I was doubting her. She started crying and locked herself up in a room. I waited outside, I was full of anger too. My blood was boiling. She was the one who had been gaslighting the situation all this while and now she was acting defensive. 
After almost four hours, she unlocked the door and came out of the room. She sat near me and apologized for her behavior. She told me that she was engrossed in the tiring work at the hospital. She had to give in to her full-time efforts these days as she was expecting a promotion. And for that, she needed to control the management, staff, as well as patients. Her reputation at the hospital was good enough to be chosen as the head of the department. She just needed to put in some managerial traits to completely fulfill the requirements of the post. Her explanations gave me some relief. I just told her that I was missing my wife. I told her I was left all alone since she had submitted herself totally to the hospital. I also said that I wanted her to be there for our son who had been missing her mom, too. He waited for her the entire day and he had to sleep without his mother's presence. Nova understood my concerns and she said she would work to balance things between the hospital and her family. She assured me that the next week the promotions would be finalized and then she would be relieved from that burden. She said that all her time after that would be ours. The assurances given by Nova were undoubtedly enough for anyone to stop thinking the way I was, but my mind did not let me rely on those. But somewhere deep down I feel she has changed. She is no longer the same person. I'm trying to be calm for the time being, but definitely not letting this slide. Rather, I'm trying my own ways to dig down to the truth. Reaction before update. I'm sorry, OP. I can sense the distress and confusion you're experiencing. It sounds like the two of you aren't on the same page at all. It's hard when there's a noticeable shift in a partner's behavior. Her commitment to her career and the pursuit of a promotion can undoubtedly be demanding. However, it seems like there's definitely something afoot. Trust is a delicate element in any relationship, and rebuilding it often involves ongoing communication, transparency, and mutual efforts. Update 2. After the last confrontation for the initial few days, she was also good to me and John. The next week was very busy for her. She would leave home early in the morning and come back at midnight or even late. A day also came when she did not return home and texted me that she would be staying in the hospital that day as the peak point of work was going on. I proved to be a supportive husband at such a time. As for our son, my parents proved to be the best babysitters. I managed the office and home together. The week seemed to be like months. It was difficult passing each day. Somehow we managed to pass it. A day before the promotion was announced, quite unexpectedly, Nova came home early. I was astonished. On entering the lounge, I saw a man behind her. He was a tall, handsome young man, but I was seeing him for the first time. She told me that he was a patient of hers and also a manager at his workplace. She told me he was there to help her with some remaining tasks. They went into the study room. I picked up our son and went to my parents. A few hours later, Nova called me to inform me that she was free now. I went back home with our son. We had dinner together after ages, but Nova was occupied by some other thoughts. On asking, she said that she was just nervous about the big day ahead. I tried to comfort her despite my irritation, because that night she genuinely seemed tensed about her career. After dinner, I kissed her, and unexpectedly she kissed me back that night. The next morning, I drove her off to the hospital. The journey was filled with my motivational speech to her, and before she got off, I reminded her to call me as soon as the ceremony ended. That day was difficult to spend in the office. I had ordered a cake with congratulations written on it. I took a short leave from the office that day and went to find a gift for her. In the afternoon, she called me and asked me to pick her up at six. I wrapped up my work before that and rushed towards the hospital. When I reached there, the receptionist told me that Nova was not free till now, and I should wait in her cabin for a while. To kill time, I started scrolling through her computer, unaware of the disaster that was going to be drooled on me. While scrolling her computer, I came across some files which was named weirdly. If it was not their weird namings, I wouldn't have opened it. I don't know why, but my heart pounded a beat when I was opening that file. To my utmost shock, a few videos and pictures emerged. It was Nova and that man who visited my house on the other day. They were making out. It was unbelievable. Suddenly, my eyes fell upon a camera monitor placed there. I turned it on to see the footage recorded a few weeks ago. Many of those revealed the true side of Nova. She was involved in a sexual relationship with that man, in her office, not only once, but multiple times. I did not know how to react. My mind was numb. My fingers froze and unable to close the screen. The video repeated, and with every turn, my blood boiled more. I could now relate to all that was happening between us. Every weird situation and every weird reaction of Nova made sense now. 
It took me a few seconds to get my senses back. I was so raged that I wanted to give her back what she had given me right there. I started thinking of how to pay her back. I took the printouts of the pictures and screenshots from the footage right there in the office. I grabbed a tape and went outside in the corridor. I wanted to paste her pictures out in the corridors of the hospital, but then I thought of being held guilty myself for such an act. So I went back to her cabin. It was almost eight, and there was no sign of her return. Each passing minute increased my rage. I broke the computer screen in anger. I wanted to humiliate Nova in front of everyone, her friends and family, so I gave pause to the plan of using those printouts. Rather, I made a screen recording and sent it to the family groups of both sides, mine and hers. The group was dead silent and not even a single person responded. I'm sure there would have been many separate conversations and phone calls happening between them. After all, I gave them a reason to gossip. After about two hours, Nova returned to the hospital from her conference and learned of my presence at the reception. I could not wait any longer and threw the printouts on her face. Nova stood there stunned, still clutching the bouquet, her face smeared with tears as a reflection of her feelings of regret and guilt. She started to explain, stumbling over her words as she related the sequence of events that had taken her wrong. She was just crying and saying how sorry she was and that she never wanted to do any such thing, but she got swayed away. She slept with that man for the promotion. AP was on the managing committee of the hospital. He was a high-profile man in the hospital. So when he was suffering from a liver problem, he came to Nova for treatment as she was an experienced doctor. His diagnosis needed long-term care, and during that period, they got close. Nova used him to climb up the promotion ladder, and in return, he climbed on her, quite literally. Nova held my hand and cried. She said that it was nothing emotional, and it was purely transactional. Her reasons disgusted me. I left her cabin. She tried to hold my hand when I was leaving, but I shrugged her off. All the remaining printouts I had in my hand, I dropped in on the reception area and left. Even one of those was enough to destroy her reputation at the hospital. I went straight to my parents to pick up my son. Everyone there was awaiting me and had a lot of questions. But I was not in a state to answer or explain anything. I just told them that all they had seen in the group was the bitter truth of our lives. Then I picked up my son and went to our home. A while later, Nova came home. She begged me to forgive her and lend her a new start. She said she was sorry and would now correct everything she had ruined. My plans were different now. I could not even think of resuming my relationship with her. I was unable to comprehend my fault in this. I had always tried to be the best husband, and even after all her strange reactions, I did not lose my resolve. I told her to take her belongings and leave my home. Soon the divorce papers would be sent to her. She tried to use her tears to plead with me until she realized that I had turned deaf ears. When she was sure there was no other option now, she packed her stuff and left. Later, I got a call from her sister, and she said that their parents were sorry about Nova's cheating, but they were also upset that I posted those pictures on the family group where some close cousins were also there. They have spread these pictures to other relatives who were not a part of the group. Nova and her family became the topic of gossip in their family. I said it was not my problem to restore their family reputation when their own daughter had ruined my life. She said that their parents have asked Nova not to come home because they don't want to be further ridiculed in their social circle. Nova was living with her friend. To make matters worse, the hospital management had fired her, leaving her jobless and without a source of income. I don't feel anything for her now because I had suffered enough in this relationship to feel any sympathy for her. What are your thoughts on OP? Thank you for joining us in our tales where revenge is served piping hot. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more stories that guarantee your satisfaction. Stay tuned for the next one to satisfy your appetite for revenge. If you're under 18, brace yourself. It's not for the faint-hearted.